Today, we are looking at one of the traits that God is expecting from each and over of, of us as believers. So, so I, so I, the title of what we are discussing this morning is bankruptcy of meekness. Bankruptcy of meekness. I want to say that meekness is one of the traits of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he expects all those who believe in him to emulate this characteristic and be like him in meekness. So because of that, he tells us when we read Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, he said, he said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He said, for what? Because for I am weak, meek, and lonely in heart, and you shall find Rest unto your soul, for I am meek and lowly in spirit. So God is expecting you and I to exhibit meekness. Meekness is not only a blessed trait, but according to Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 5, verse 5, the Bible tells us that the meek people shall inherit the earth. So Meekness is not just a it's not just not a, a blessed trait, but there are benefits to of being of being meek. The Bible tells us in that much chapter five verse five it says, in one of the uh, gratitude it said the meek shall what shall inherit the earth. But what is meekness? Before we look at the bankruptcy of meekness, first of all, what is bankruptcy? What is bankrupt? What, is, what does it mean to be, for a man to be bankrupt? Financially, we know what needs to be bankrupt. When a man cannot, when a man is depleted of his finances or her finances, that he can no longer pay his debtors, then the person will file what? File for bankruptcy. Also, there's moral bankruptcy. When a man is lacking a, 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 a desirable trait, a desirable quality that he or she, he or she is able to have, that person is morally bankrupt. What is meekness? It has been said that meekness is neither a sign of weakness nor passiveness. It is not a sign, meekness, that the fact that you are me or the fact that I am me is not a sign of weakness or that I am passi or, 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 or passiveness. But it is a word of great strength. Meekness is a, is, is a virtue. It is a personality of gentleness and modesty. The opposite of which is what? Pride. Many people have attempted to, de to, define, to define meekness. Um, in the Bible, um, Bible scholars, many people have attempted to, to describe meekness, to define definition. And I will just give a, a, a few one here. Aristotle described meekness as the middle position between excessive anger and an excessive lack of anger. The middle point. The middle point between excessive when somebody is between excessive anger and excessive lack of anger. It is a peaceful freedom from fretful anger, just as we have read in that Psalm 37. When a man is free from fretful anger. That is, but that, that is based on not just free from fear to anger, but you you are not afraid. You are not you are not you are not angry because you believe you trust in God. You believe you it, that is based on trusting God and rolling and rolling all our ways unto Him. That person is meek. Nursing Bible dictionary define meekness as an attitude of of humility towards God. And gentleness towards men. Springing from where? From a, a recognition that God is in control. When you are not afraid, you are not, you are, you are not, you are not afraid of anything because you, are, you have the confidence that God is in control of that situation. You are not, you have, you, you, you have an you have an attitude of humility toward God and gentleness towards men. Because you know that regardless of, of what may come your way, God is in control. That is meekness. That is meekness. 
It's not just ab- it's not just meekness. It's not just absence of pride. It's not that because there are some people. Who say, oh, I am not. Pr-. It's not just meekness. It's not just absence of pride and arrogance. But rather, is the fullness of the presence of God, where pride and arrogance cannot abide. You are so full of the presence of God that pride and arrogance does not have a place in your heart. That arrogance and pride does not have a place in, in, in your life because of the fullness of God in your life. There's no room for ang- there's no room for anger. There's no room for there's no room for pride because you are full of the presence of God. What is meekness? Meekness is power is, is, is power under control. You have all the power, but that power did not control you. Do not allow that power to control you. You may have financial power. You may be, you have you may have political power. You may have personal power, but do not allow that power to control you and use it to oppress other people. You put that you put your power under the control of the Holy Spirit. You allow the Holy Spirit to, to take control of even of that power you have. Maybe it may, it may be financial power. It may be whatever power you may call it. You do not allow that power to control you. A, 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 a meek man is one who has every instinct under control. You have everything, every, every, everything. You have it under control. Every impulse, every passion, every ounce of strength. You have all of them has been announced by the Holy Spirit. And also, meekness is the fruit of the Spirit. It's a fruit of the Spirit. It's not something that you just, you just, you just that would just come upon you. Is a fruit. Meekness is a fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter five, verse twenty-two to twenty-three, tell us. He said, "But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Is love? Is 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 peace? Is love suffering? Is gentleness?" Is goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against us, there is no law. Meekness is one of the spirit. So in the scripture, we have seen, we have so many characters that the Bible tells us that they exhibited meekness, that they exhibited meekness in their lives. Of course, we know about Moses. The Bible tells us in, in, in Numbers chapter, Number chapter 12, verse 3, that Moses was the meekest person on earth. Was the meekest person on earth. And when we read the scripture, we are told that he displayed weakness in many ways. He displayed, his, number one, he displayed weakness, meekness by, for his willingness to take off his sandals. To take off his sandals and bow before God in reference in, in that burning bush. He displayed meekness when he asked the God to stand before, before Pharaoh and, 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 and declare and, and pronounce the judgment of God upon, upon, upon him. That is meekness. Also, we are told that he displayed weakness, meekness not when he was not only openly uh, uh, criticized for his choice of wife. We all know the story, so I'm not going to labor us with that. When he, uh, we are told that Aaron, the second in command, and Miriam, they stand up against Moses. And they tell Moses, number one, number one where do, how come we go and take wife from that, from that tribe? Not only that, they were told that they, are, they also, also uh, uh, criticized him they, uh, they, uh, about his leadership qualification. They said, is it only you, is it, is it only you that God has been spoken to? God also has, has been speaking to us too. And instead of him to reply them, the Bible did not tell us he did anything. In fact, the Bible tells us that when God, when God pronounced judgment up, 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 upon Aaron, Aaron and Miriam, the only thing we have from Moses was that Moses started interceding on their, on their behalf. Numbers chapter 12, verse 13. Numbers 12, verse 13. We are told that when God pronounced judgment and uh, uh, leprosy came up upon Maria, we are told that he started begging God on, on their behalf. This is somebody who has 
who has been criticizing you, this somebody who has, who has even declared that you are not even nobody. He said, and Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, He has now, O God, I beseech thee. He criticized him what's that on his gram. What about David? He more meekness, but in the scripture, I have not, I have not seen where David bragged about killing Goliath. This is, this is somebody who has been terrorizing the whole, a whole, a whole nation for 40 days and night. David never bragged about killing Goliath. In fact, it was the woman that was singing for, on, on his behalf. He never, never in the scripture that you see David brag about killing Goliath, the greatest enemy of, 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 of Israel. He never bragged about it. If he went, even when he had the opportunity to kill Saul and claim the kingdom for himself, he kept his ambition bidu. In 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 6, 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 6, he said, The Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master. Despite all, despite that all the ambition of Saul to kill, to kill him. To kill him. When he had the opportunity to kill him, he said, he said the Lord forbid. The Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master. The Lord's anointed. Or lift my hands against him. For he is what? The anointed of the Lord. That is meekness. That is meekness. Meekness. When you have when, 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 when you, have, you have opportunity to revenge. When you have opportunity to oppress people. And, and you do not allow that power you have. You do not allow it to control you. What about Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is the meekness personified. He, pers he told his disciples, we all know the story, when, when he was about to be arrested, and one of the disciples took, uh, took uh, cutlass and cut the ear of the, one of, 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 of the person. He said, who, who asked you to do that? He said, don't, 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 don't think that I have enough power. That I have enough power to call my to call my father in heaven. That he will send me not only one religion. He said, if I call on him today, he will call, he will send me 12 legion. And we, as we all know, one legion is what? It's, it's uh, 6,000, 6,000 angels. So he's, in essence, he said that if I should call God, if I should call on my father in heaven, this God will send me 72,000 angelic warriors. That will destroy all these people that came to arrest me. It's, but he has that power, but did not allow that power to control him. Later, later, after he has been arrested and he was standing before Pilate, he, he, he told Pilate, he said, Pilate was asking a question in, in John chapter 19, verse 9 and 10. John chapter 19, verse 9 and 10. He said, Where do you come from? He, he asked him, but we are told that Jesus Christ gave him no answer. He, he, did, not, he did not respond. He said, do, he said, do, uh, Peter, Peter was furious. He said, do you refuse to speak to me? Do you realize, he said, don't you realize that I have power either to free you or, or to crucify you? So Jesus Christ that. Jesus Christ responded. You don't know who you are speaking with. I have enough power. If, 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 I, if I need to be free, number one, you don't even have, first of all, let it be said to you, you don't even have any power o over me except the power that has been given to you for what? From heaven. You don't even have any power to, if you, have any, you don't have any control. You don't have any control unless the power that has been given to you from heaven. So, what are the indicators? What are the indicators that a, a person is brand meekness? What can we see in the light in the life of a person that we see with that we look at this man some, uh, uh, is, is short of meekness? The first thing that comes to my mind is that when you see any person that is un, un, unwilling to acknowledge mistake. You know, to take responsibility for your, for your mistake. That person, meekness is far away from such person. Why a meek person is not only ashamed 
to turn, is not only ashamed to turn back why or she is, that, that has made a wrong decision or move, a person that is brown up in meekness, in meekness prefer to die. Prefer to die with the wrong step he has taken. They, when, even, when, even when they realize that they have made the mistake, whether in the marriage, whether, 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 it's not for them to turn back. They would rather die because of their pride. They would rather die in that, in, 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 in that wrong step they have taken, in that wrong move they have taken, in the, 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 they have made, instead of them to make a U-turn. Psalm 29, verse, Psalm 25, verse 9. Psalm 25, verse 9. He said, the meek will be guide in judgment. And the meek, he will teach way. When you see a man that is meek, God will guide him in judgment. When the, he's beginning to make mistakes. And during, during the, on Wednesday, our brother was reminded us of, of, of prodigal son. We are told, we all know the story, but we are told that it, 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 came, it came one day when he realized that he had made a, a mistake. When he, he realized that he had made a mistake of his life, he said, he said, he said, he said, ah, he said I will arise. I will arise and go back to my father. I will arise. And not, not only he, he, he made that decision, we are told that he arose. And he called to his father. And he, it's not, not only... He, like his father, he was, he was not, he was not justifying himself. He said, "I have sinned against you, and against God." He accepted his, his mistakes. He, but many believers today, they are unwilling to accept, to, to make a U-turn from from their wrong ways. Many people today are unwilling to accept, to take responsibility for their wrong, for their wrong move. They rather die in that. They rather, they rather continue to die in to uh, to circle run in that problem. They are there to make you turn. They know the re, they know the reason behind it. They are for them to make you turn. But pride does not allow them. What what are the indicators of a person that is bank up of meekness? A life of envy. A life of envy. When you see somebody that's so envious, envious about your colleagues, envious about, about your sinner, envious, envious. The Bible tells us in that in 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 in, in that, in that uh, Psalm thirty-seven, Psalm thirty-seven, brother Jisha, Psalm thirty-seven, verse one. He said, "Don't be afraid about what." He said, "Fret not thyself because of evil do evil do Neither be envious against the workers of iniquity. Go ahead, my sir, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither." As they get out, he said, "Trust in the Lord and do good; so shall you dwell in the land." And fairly, I say unto you, that shall be fed. That shall be fed. He said, "Delight also that yourself in the Lord, and ye shall give the the desires of God of your heart." Verse five. He said, "Commit your ways, commit your ways into the Lord, and trust in Him, and He shall bring it to pass." Verse six. He shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, as the what? As the light, uh, as the light, and thy judgment as the moon day. He said, "Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for Him. Fret not thyself because of Him who prosper in His own way." Many believers today, we see people that prosper in the world, and we begin to envy them. We don't even know the source of their wealth. We don't know where they get the money from. During the week, I, I was uh, on Tuesday. I was reading Guardians. And I saw a Nigerian arrested at JFK on, on Tuesday. They have been waiting for him for the past two years. What did he do? He, he, he suffered about $10, $10 million for uh, insurance fraud. But people have been, I, I'm so sure people have, have been having on him. $300 million. Why are $300 million back home? And has been doing for the past ten years. People may have been having him. We don't. Only, only God knows. Maybe he's even living in Banana and Republic because everybody wants to live in Banana Republic. Our Banana Island. Sorry. Praise the Lord. Envy. 
envy people that prosper in their own way as a believer. When you see people with envy, you envy about somebody's ex car. Oh, somebody, are you, are you, is this only him? You don't know where you get the money from. Envy of evil doer. Bible tell us, he said, don't be mild. He said, rest in the Lord and wish it believe. Fret not thyself because of him who prosper in his way. Because of the man who bring wicked devices to pass. Verse 8. He says, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any in any ways to do evil. And verse 9. He said, for evil doers, for, they shall be what? They shall be cut off. No matter, they, they, when I was growing up, one thing that my dad always tell me is that lies may prosper for 20 years. Lies may prosper for 20 years, but a day is coming that truth will take over that lie. It may prosper. Men may be, do evil for years, but a day. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the law, they shall what? They shall inherit. Envy. Envy. Envy is an indicator of lack of meekness. It robs God of his glory and you, your joy. It robs you, your joy, your joy. It is a big problem in this life. It is a big problem in the Christian dome today. Jake Pierce said, he said, he described envy as this. He said, it is, it is, it is the green eye monster who does mock the meat that feed is on, that they feed on on on, on. The, the meat stuff that is eating is still mocking it that's how uh, uh, shakespeare describe uh, envy the green eye monster which joy mock the meat it feeds on another another person call it he said it's a, it's a foul it's a foul sign a, a, a foul sin the worst of all sin because it is against all virtue, it is against every virtue. It's against, it's against it's against every manner of goodness. Envy. It's against all manners of goodness. So, as children of God, we should we should shun away and we should shun away from envy, because it will draw us away from God and make us miserable. You become envious about that person's wealth. You never know the source. And because of that, you will see yourself as God has not done anything to you. As God has not answered your prayer. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 30. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 30. It says, it says, it says a, heart of, a, a heart at peace gives life to the body. But envy rots the bone. Envy. Envy rots what? Envy rots the bone. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 30. A heart of peace gives life to the body. When you are at peace, you may, never, you may not have money, you may never have food to eat, but you are at peace with yourself. It's better. The Bible says it's better than somebody who is envious. Because when you are envious, it, rots, it, it affects your bone. It makes your bones to God rotten. Envy is ultimately, according to Job, ultimately will destroy that person. Job chapter 5, verse 2. He said, A sentiment kills a fool, and envy slays the simple. Slays the simple. That's what envy can do to a person. Pray that in any way that we are exhibiting any of these traits, God will deliver us in the name of Jesus. How do you identify? How do you identify a somebody that's a bank of, of meekness? When you're unwilling, when you see a person that's unwilling to submit to, to God's word, meekness is far away from that person. Unwilling, un, not submission to God's word. The Bible is the, this Bible, this is the, is the, is the, is the, is the, is the beat and bridle that control the, the, our, our, our spirit man. The Bible tells us that the heart of any man is what? Desperately wicked. But when you allow this world to control you, when you when you submit yourself to this to, to this God to this world, it will transform you. James chapter one verse twenty one tells it, it challenges us to receive God's revelation with openness 
so that it can change us. My prayer is that we, we will submit to God's word in the name of Jesus. He said, therefore lay aside, therefore lay aside all fitness and overflow of wickedness and receive with what? With meekness the unplanted word which is able to save your soul. Which is able to save your soul. A man that is unwilling to submit to God's word, that person is bankrupt of weakness. And also, how do you identify somebody that is bankrupt of weakness? When you see a person that is judgmental, judgmental, you always judge people. When you don't even know what they are going through, you don't even know, you don't even know the reason behind or what they are, of their action. But you are, you are, you are judge, you are always judge, you are pass judgment. Why a meek person will not judge or condemn others for their belief or their opinions, even when they, when they do not agree, that is not true of a person that is bankrupt of meekness. The story was told of a man. We, we all know Chuck uh, Swindle. He's one of those um, uh, speakers that normally go to a conference to speak to people. So he, he said, he, said, he, he, he has one on speaking, on speaking engagement in, in California. He said, as he as got there, it was supposed to be a one week from Sunday to Sunday program. He said, as he got there on that Sunday morning, he said, a man approached him. He said, oh, Dr. Swindle, thank God you are here. I have been waiting all, all week for this time. And now since you are here, I am going to eat every word that you, are, you will speak here. I'm going to eat it. I will eat it completely. And master, okay, thank you. However, when the conference started, the man noticed that this guy that just told him that he will be eating all his words on the first day, he was he dozed off, he was sleeping. On the second day, he dozed off. Throughout the whole week, he dozed off. He started packing. Look at look, look at this man. I said, I'm going to eat every, every, of your, every, every word that I speak. And, and he, cannot even, he did not even listen to any, of, to any of them. He was just sleeping. So at the end of the program, a lady that was sitting beside the man approached uh, Dr. Swido. He said, Doctor, I just want to say thank you for this week. And I want to say that I've been really, really blessed. However, I want to apologize to you that my husband that was sitting beside me was sleeping all, all, all time. He said he was taken out. He said because he said he was he said he said he, he, got, he was sleeping because he had been he was he had been diagnosed with cancer, and the doctors gave him about two weeks to live. And they told when we asked him that what do you want to do in your last week of life, he said I want to listen to Doctor Sindo. He said however doctors gave him a medicine that make him to sleep. So that, the, so, that the, so that the pain of cancer will be reduced. He said, that's why he's sleeping. He said, regardless, however, I want you to know that you are making to make to make the best use of his last week in life. The man said, he nearly collapsed. He said, if there's any shear under, under where he can, he can just hide himself. Because he has passed judgment, the way of judgment over him over the, during the week. So don't be judgmental about people. You may not like their way of life. You may not like not what they do. But can't you, instead of, instead of passing judgment on them, can't you ask God to give the, the grace God has given to you? Why can't God to extend the same grace to them? We are all products of, of grace. We are all products of grace. So don't be judgmental. There, there may be circumstances and factors at work in another person's life that you don't understand or know. That you don't know. That I mean, I, do, I don't know. That, but we are quick. We have to tell us that we, have to tell us that we should be what? We should, we should not be quick to what? To speak or to judge. How do you identify, as I close this morning, how do you identify somebody that is, that is, that, uh, that is, uh, that is bankrupt of meekness. When you see a person that is all temper, all temper, all temper is an extreme anger. In that scripture, we are told in that verse one, he said, "Run away." He said, "Fret not for what anger. Run away from anger." All temper is an is a deep-rooted spiritual anger 
that controls the individual affected. It is a natural, it is a natural feeling of pain and displeasure arising from the heart against a person or a bad action. And it is a leather person, it's a, it's a leather weapon in the heart of enemy against every believer. That you can that enemy is using even to drain many people from the kingdom. So I don't know. Which one of these traits do you exhibit? The time for us, as we end this month, we we'll go into, into the month of September. Is it, is it time for us to examine our life? To examine. Is there any of these traits that I'm exhibiting? Is it, is it, uh, is it, am I all tempered? Is it, uh, I, have, I, have a, I, have, I have difficulty in submission, in, in submitting to the, what, the word of God? Is it, is it because, I, is it, or am I always, always, always making excuses? Always re not ready to as accept, accept my mistakes? What is it that you exhibit? If I was to rise this morning, I want you to, I want you to, I want you to remember that me, a meek and a quiet spirit is a is, is a is of great va value to God, and He expects each and every of us, His children, to exhibit meekness. I want you to ask, even as you stand this morning, I want you to ask God that in any area of your life where you are bankrupt of meekness, where you are, where you are, where you are bankrupt of meekness, that God will have mercy. I want you to repent, repent, and ask God for mercy, for even envy and focusing on, on apparent and momentum prosperity of evil doers. We envy, we oh, we don't even, we, we, we don't even know their source, and we look to ourselves as if God has not done anything to us, as if God has not answered our prayer. We want to ask God for mercy this morning, Lord. We repent, oh God. We repent, oh God. We ask for your mercy. We ask for mercy in any way where we have been. Focusing our attention, where we have been uh, 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 focusing our uh, the, uh, appropriating our energy on the word of the evil doers, oh Lord. Lord, we repent this morning. We repent in the name of Jesus. We want to pray that you will not use your power, you will not use your strength, you will not use your influence to subdue others, you will not use your power to oppress others, but rather God will be your fortress. God will be your defender. You will not, you will not, you will not try to defend yourself even when you, when you are being wrong, oh God. Lord, we ask for God this morning in the name of Jesus. And lastly, I want to pray. Father, as I go this week, guide my steps. Guide my step against every wrong note and against wrong move or decision in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask for God this morning. Lord, as we join in this week, oh Lord, please guide our, uh, guide our step, oh God. Guide us, oh God, guide our step, oh God, against every wrong, against, against, against taking any wrong, wrong step, oh God. Against making any wrong decisions, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for that same, Father. And lastly, I want to pray. I want to ask God for grace. Grace. Grace to make a U-turn. Grace to make a U-turn of every wrong decision or, or move you have taken in life. In the order of prodigal son, prodigal son will have died, will have died, uh, will have died in eating pig meat. But our brother reminded us on Wednesday, he said, but one day he, he returned. We, he said, we have, have we ever imagined what would have happened to him if he have never taken that decision? He has never taken that, he has not taken that, okay, oh, that was we can regard as shame. Not knowing that his father was waiting for him at all. His father was waiting for him, but with a, not only waiting for him, but with a big party. And that's what God is waiting for as many of us that are yet to know him. God is waiting. The Bible tells us that there's a rejoicing in heaven when a sinner gives life to Christ. We ask for God this morning, grace, grace, as a church, as a people, as individual, as husband, as wife, the great for us, O oh God, to make you turn of every wrong decision we have made in life, O oh Lord. Lord, may we receive it, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. That we will not die in our in, in, in our wrong step, O oh Lord. We will not we will not die with our wrong with, our, with the wrong decision we have made, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus.
thank you for that thing, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray.